Here is another 20 pint dehumidifier. This one is White Westinghouse branded. It is pretty much identical to the 1968 model I showed a couple days ago, other than the color being different. This one came with the original instruction manual which is pretty neat and it also came with the bucket and I believe that bucket should fit both of them because they're pretty much the same thing which is interesting considering I believe there's quite a bit of age difference between these two units The White Westinghouse Corporation. One of the White Westinghouse, one of the White Consolidated Industries. Limited, I think it says, or no, it says WCI. It has R500, which is good, good refrigerant, nice low pressures. Model ED203F3. Serial number EFB114746. And the other number is E705501. It's got the same automatic shutoff contraption, which I don't like. And the same uh, coil. Now, I was hoping that this would be an identical model to the other one. I don't know why I thought that. I guess I just didn't look at the pictures very closely. But uh, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but it's also not. But I think it's close enough that it, it gives us some interesting information. There's the compressor and the fan motor. The coil has uh, a little bit of a different design. This one's like a circular kind of coil. Almost looks like an electric heater. And uh, the other one is more of a conventional style. I'm gonna have to open this up to try to get the date code off the compressor. But uh, it does work. And what's intriguing about this is it works the same way as the other one. I had this on for a little while yesterday to check it out. And uh, sure enough, it doesn't get cold all the way through. Something rattles horribly in this thing. Sure, it can be stopped. A little bit of pressure in certain places will quiet it down, but I'm not sure what it is. But it follows the same pattern as the other one. The coil ices up, and then it slowly defrosts over the course of maybe 10 minutes. And then it, it doesn't frost anymore, but it doesn't get cold all the way through. Which, to me, is not correct, but I'm starting to wonder if maybe that's intentional. Perhaps the intention was it was charged at a much lower temperature because remember we're testing these in almost 80 degrees. At least in this part of the country, these are intended for uses, generally speaking, in the basement where it's going to be colder, you know, maybe 60s, 65, 70, or even colder than that. At the old location, that basement would be in the low 60s all year, even during the summer. So it's possible that these were charged to that to, to work in that temperature. Because if it was if it was charged to work in 75 or 80, it would ice up in, in 60. And of course this being a manual defrost, you can't have it icing up. So 
I don't know. That's my speculation. A couple other people commented in and, and uh, kind of said something similar, similar theory. So that might just be the case. It does have this weird plastic piece in here. So that was on the other one. I'll go ahead and put that back, I guess, because apparently it belongs there. And you can see now we're iced up completely. And I'll give it a few minutes. It'll unthaw. And uh, it'll start pulling moisture. What's also interesting to me is that if you look at the coil, the cleanliness of it varies. The second layer is really kind of grungy, but the first layer is clean. So that would lead me to believe that the water has been running down this coil for a long time, and not that coil, not the second layer. So, it might just be the way it is. I suppose the next task would be to put one downstairs, or actually it's not that cold downstairs. Maybe to put one here in the living room, and just freeze the room out and see how it behaves. If that would prove my theory wrong or correct, if we drop the temperature to say 65, and it starts going back cold, then uh, I think it's safe to say that's the way it's designed to be. So even though this, again, is exhibiting all the, the factors of being low in charge, I'm starting to think that maybe it's not. And maybe this is just by design. So I'll let this run for a while. We'll come back in about 10 minutes. And it'll be effectively pulling moisture and it will not be iced up anymore. But it will not be cold all the way through. Here we go. It's defrosted all by itself. And it's pulling plenty of moisture. So I don't think that it's not working adequately. That's pulling a lot of moisture for a little 20 pint unit. That's pretty good. But the second layer is not cold. It is not going back cold. So I don't quite understand how the compressor is not just going to overheat. I don't get that. But after seeing two of these with the same design, different eras, different refrigerants, behaving exactly the same. And I suppose they could both have the same defect that's conceivable, but uh, I'm not sure. I kind of think that this is just the way it is. 